Okay. Let's just check technology behaving itself here. And in three. Okay. Just double checking we're live across all the platforms, my friends. See a few people jumping on. Hello. Good to see you. Hello there. Hello. Good to see you. Let me just see if we're going to be live across the board here. Hello. Yeah, guys, jump on. Give me a wave. Good to see you. Let me know where you're watching from. We're nearly there. Hello there. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if this title grabbed your attention. Let me know if you want to do more coaching, improve your coaching business. Let me know where you're at. Okay, we are live across the board, my friends. So thank you to those of you waving and saying hello so far. And the title of today's live is how to be a coach that people want to work with. Now I might have actually misnamed today's live. What if you could be a coach that people need to work with? Now, we're approaching the conversation today from a little bit of a different angle. Hello, hello, good to see you. We're approaching today's conversation from a little bit of a different angle. So oftentimes you talk about, Jermaine, how can I, how can I market myself as a coach? Now marketing is, of course, of course something that we're gonna do and something we're gonna talk about. But what if the market came to you? Now this is not something that will happen with a click of the fingers. This is something that over time, when you implement some of the things I'm gonna share with you today, certainly can and will happen. So, first of all, who? Who do you want out there to be coming to you for coaching? You've gotta define who. Now, just because you're very good at life coaching, let's say, or business coaching, it will help immensely if you can dive a little bit deeper into a specific group of people. So let's pick one from the air. So one of my mentor, one of my mentees rather, uh, in the Fast Coach Academy, she works with women between the ages of 30 and 50 who are looking to leave the corporate world and start their own business within the training sector. So you can see how that's much more specific than just saying, I'm a business coach. Now what this allows you to do, this allows you to talk to that specific group of people. But there's a little bit, for me anyway, now and as anything that I talk about guys, there is no there is no Jermaine Harris way, I'm not here on my high horse thinking that my way is the right way. What I'm sharing with you is some of the things that have worked for me and for my mentees. And when we're picking a coaching niche, if you like, or a group of people, and I've worked in various different coaching niches within my coaching practice, I think that, or I know, I would say I know this, that it's absolutely vital that this coaching niche, this group of people fills you with excitement. Fills you with excitement. You're excited to create whatever transformation you can create within that community of people. So I've done lots of peak performance coaching within sport and in particular golf, because I love golf. I love watching people's, um, the light bulb come on as how much their mindset is affecting their peak performance. So that fills me with excitement. I love mentoring aspiring speakers and coaches, people who wanna do it all, people who wanna coach and speak and train within businesses, because I know what an exciting and fulfilling journey that is, which makes me excited and fulfilled to be able to share that journey with other people. So that, that being filled with excitement is what can make all the distance. And for me, that is what will allow me to gain momentum across the board in whatever coaching niche that I've decided to focus on because that excitement, it comes through the camera, it comes across in the networking meeting or the virtual networking and meeting at the moment, of course, with everything going on. That excitement comes through and you start to be the type of coach that those people want to work with. Now, next question is, are you qualified? Now, I don't mean necessarily qualifications, letters after your name, um, you know, university. I don't necessarily mean things like that. Of course, 
there are certain coaching niches if you're dealing with trauma and perhaps that type of thing there are certain coaching niches where you do indeed need to be registered with the health professions council and you do need some physical qualifications but when i talk about are you qualified it might come from experience it might come from self-learning it might come going through coaching yourself and then being coached how to coach and building that passion that way. And once you can, if you can answer that question, are you qualified to be coaching these people? If you can answer that with a firm yes, then you're on the road to indeed being a coach that people want to work with because you're going to exude that confidence. Which is why, again, to, to share the work that I do with aspiring speakers and coaches, I find it so exciting is because I know in my soul Lots of the stuff that doesn't work, lots of the stuff that does work, and lots of the stuff that can be tweaked to work when people put their own twist on it. Now the next question is, would you still do that type of coaching? Would you still, someone says, hell yes, I'm qualified, love it. Would you still do this type of coaching if your bank balance was 100 million? If your bank balance was 100 million, will you still, would you still do this type of coaching? If the answer to that question is yes, of course I would, then you really start to get the ball rolling. Because being a coach that people want and need to work with, we're going to come a little bit further on to results and creating transformations in a moment. But it's the energy that you put out there. It's for the love of the game, if you like.